first of all, um, the hindsight bias point um, is important because it is part of the, of the narrative that the banks and um, everyone in the government, the regulators and so forth, should have known. And his point is, after an event occurs, we go back and we find out some information about what happened, and we assume that the people who were operating at the time knew all the information that we have now discovered. And the chances are they did not. Uh, so the, a lot of what you are reading is, is just hindsight. And the blame that is placed on banks, I think, and on regulators, even on regulators, is a lot of hindsight by people who assume that they knew things that they did not know and could not have known. Human ignorance and human error, another point that is always worth thinking about. And that is that we only have a limited amount of information that we can absorb and, and um, there's an awful lot of information that is actually withheld from us. Uh, and the, the fact that, inf that information was withheld is very important too. Right now, it, it is, it is, the SEC is about to charge Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac with failing accurately to disclose the subprime mortgages that they had made. That for most of the time that they were making subprime mortgages, starting in 1992, and I'll get to the numbers near the end, but starting in 1992, they were reporting that they had almost no exposure, less than 1% exposure to subprime mortgages. It was completely false. Um, and yet, no one bothered to look at the data. Nobody got the data from them. Nobody looked in the, in the back of their 10Ks when they started to file 10Ks in, the, in, in, 19, uh, in 2003, 2004. But there, in the back, if you looked at it and you knew what a subprime loan was, you would be able to see that, in fact, they, were, they had tremendous um, investments in subprime loans. And what did that mean if you put that into the whole context of what was happening in the bubble? And I'll get to that in a little while. But the point is, there was tremendous amount of ignorance about what actually was happening in the market up until 2008. Bankers, it is said, knowingly took on too much risk. Jeff covers this. Um, and and uh, the story is they took on too much risk because they knew they were going to be bailed out. Now, that's a really stupid idea, and it never, ever gets questioned. Um, why would anyone take on risk? He, Jeff does well to point out that banks, bankers actually didn't take that much risk in terms of what they were buying. But why would anyone take risk because they knew they were going to be bailed out? You would, if, if that happened, as Jeff points out in the book, you suffer the humiliation of losing your job. Um, you are looked on as a dope. For, for jeopardizing your company. Um, and the fact that the company is going to be bailed out would not necessarily occur to a rational person. The, the importance of the company being bailed out is that the creditors know that they are going to be bailed out. And because the creditors know, that's where the moral hazard arises. They are free in providing the financing. The creditors are the only ones who really are not benefited by risk-taking. And as Jeff just pointed out, the management loves risk-taking. So do, the, so do the, the equity holders, the, sh the shareholders, because that produces more profits. The creditors aren't benefited by risk-taking. And they're the ones who are misled um, uh, into believing that uh, sometimes they're not misled in the case of Fannie and Freddie, they weren't misled, but they are often misled into believing that companies are safe or that they will be bailed out if a company fails. Um, and infrequently they are, so it wasn't actually that they were misled. They, were, they simply were, were um, believing something that made them act in ways that they would not ordinarily have acted. Um, bankers acted 